Hi, this is Scott Bogren, Communications Director for the Community Transportation Association of America, and here with a, another of my periodic federal trans surface transportation news updates, and also to give you a little bit of an idea of what we at this Community Transportation Association have been up to. It has been a busy uh, three, four weeks now since uh, my last video contribution, and I know many of you have been busy as well, and I have a lot to update, so let's jump right into uh, today's discussion. First off, just a couple days after my last video, which was on the 24th, I believe, of uh, February, uh, on the 26th of February, two pretty big events happened. One, the House Ways and Means Committee's chair, uh, uh, Congressman Camp, uh, came forward with a tax reform bill, the the Tax Reform Act of 2014, uh, which importantly set aside $126.5 billion to um, put money back into the Surface Transportation Trust Fund. And uh, this was um, welcome news. It was good to see a Republican at that level and stature in the House talking about ways to inject revenues into the trust fund. Later, almost the same time that day, President Obama uh, speaking from the uh, St. Paul Union Depot, which will be right by where we're having, incidentally, our Community Transportation Expo this June. Uh, President Obama unveiled parts of his budget and, most importantly, talked about the pieces of his budget that impact and, and focus on transportation. And for the first time, started to talk more significantly about what the administration wanted in a reauthorization of MAP 21 and, kind of a first, had some more serious pay-fors and ways to fund a significantly grown program than they had in the past. Uh, they also are focusing on tax reform and business tax reform being a key component in the administration's plan. The administration's plan, big numbers, is a uh, $302 billion bill over four years. It would more than double uh, funding for public and community transportation programs, and it certainly uh, would be would be welcome. Those two things happened, as I said, right at the end of February, and uh, kind of boosted momentum, I think, for uh, some decision making and for a lot of policy uh, discussion around surface transportation. Both of those being a good thing. On the negative side of those, uh, both of them are funded. And, uh, and are kind of predicated on some fairly significant tax reform that is, I think, safe to say, unlikely to pass in the current environment here in Washington and in the Congress. In fact, the Senate, um, pretty quickly after Representative Camp came out with his concept, the Senate kind of said, uh, we won't be taking that up this year. And many have pointed to um, similar uh, uh, flaws, I guess, in what the administration is doing, although the administration is, is, is defending those positions as, as it should. And uh, that's kind of how that kind of played out, leading into some more significant events and um, some events that involved uh, us here at CTIA and, and thereby kind of uh, you as uh, community and public transportation providers and advocates. On the 6th of March, um, we, CTAA, along with the, the ATU and APTA, uh, testified before the Senate Banking Committee. Our board chair, Barb Klein from Spearfish, South Dakota, did a wonderful job that day. And uh, that video and all of the oral and written testimony are available on our webpage. Just click on reauthorization and you, you can see what we had to say. But really, to, to boil it down, we focused on, on four key things in our testimony. Uh, first and foremost, the dangers of not passing a bill, the dangers of allowing nothing to happen and we slip into MAP 21 expiring and, and the, the real significant um, uh, and serious nature of the problems that would create around the country and particularly how um, rural and small urban communities would be disproportionately impacted uh, and quickly impacted uh, in such a scenario. We also talked about uh, something we've spoken here about before and, and is something that we are continuing to uh, put energy to, which is the ongoing bus crisis and, and the fact that um, bus operators in the country, both rural, small urban, and even the, our largest uh, urban areas that are only operating buses, um, 
are suffering. There's simply not enough capital dollars uh, for bus replacement, adequate bus replacement. We're talking about bus replacement to maintain current services, not necessarily growing programs. There's just not enough federal investment right now in the bus program, and we wanted to make sure that the Senate heard that loud and clear, and I know they did. Um, we also spoke to the association's um, recommendations on increases in various formula programs, and obviously the 5310, the 5311 program, the 5307 program, uh, maintaining growth in those is, is critical. And lastly, we talked about um, small urban and rural transit systems' key role in transporting uh, vulnerable populations around the country, people with disabilities, seniors, uh, low-income, the working poor, folks that really rely on transportation and public transportation to get them to and from all matter of quality of life. So we, we hit on that issue as well. And like I said, you can see that in both our written and oral testimony. And there's also even a video of, of Barb's testimony on, on our website. I encourage you to, to link and, and take some time and, and watch all those. Uh, on the 12th of March, so, so yesterday, lots happened. Uh, we had two kind of events that I wanted to touch base on. One, the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee had a hearing where they were working with, uh, uh, working and, and, and discussing transportation policy with, the policy with the federal partners, including DOT, FTA, and, and others. Um, uh, familiar faces to us, both uh, uh, Peter Rogoff and Therese McMillan were, were both on hand to testify. And there were a couple of interesting exchanges that uh, uh, are worth uh, noting. One was where um, there was an interesting discussion that uh, uh, Congressman uh, DeFazio, excuse me, uh, from Oregon had a, uh, had a chance to have a good and I thought um, fruitful discussion with Mr. Rogoff about how there wasn't enough money to get us through to the end of this year and that the administration's concepts of, of tax reform and business tax reform, though he certainly was supportive of those, weren't going to happen in time. And it was a little alarming to hear Mr. Rogoff talk about the highway trust fund slipping uh, below $4 billion in July, the trans transit trust fund slipping below a billion dollars in August, and the impact of that and how DOT would have to um, go about trying to pay its bills and the impact, of course, on all of you which, again, would be significant. So there was that interchange. And as well, there was a good interchange uh, between Representative Eleanor Holmes Norton, who is the ranking member in that subcommittee um, uh, from Washington, D.C., actually, talking about buses and the need for buses. And um, that was an important uh, interchange. And it was great to see uh, FTA's Therese McMillan discuss how the administration wanted to increase bus capital funding by 300% in its forthcoming details, but already out in many forms in its uh, reauthorization proposal, certainly something, again, we would support. After that, and later on yesterday afternoon, um, CTA's Small Urban Network, our son, had a Hill briefing with Hill staff and other kind of transportation supporters in a pretty crowded room, and, and we were there to talk about uh, the key legislative issues for the Sun Committee, which are bus funding and increasing and doubling the Small Transit Intensive Communities, or STIC, program. So, so a couple things I want to point you to, kind of where we are right now. CTAA's reauthorization recommendations are available for download on our homepage. Please do that and let me know what you think, if you have any ideas, uh, suggestions. As well, in uh, uh, our Sun, which is www.cta backslash SUN, you can find a whole um, report on the bus capital crisis with details and facts from around the country. I encourage you to look at those. And I'll kind of end today with the outlook. And the outlook is still cloudy. Um, we have, we've had some positive exchanges, but we've also seen some um, uh, kind of watering down of that momentum. And time is wasting. We have until July 30th to get these bills through the House and Senate. And uh, we are going to have a lot of work to do between now and then. What you can do back home is take these documents and meet with your members of Congress, your senators, your House members. Remember, they're only here in D.C. one out of every three days. They're home quite a bit. Talk to them and make sure they understand what exactly 
is at stake in this reauthorization debate. Make sure they understand that you need to have a bill, that, that having no bill is a dangerous situation for you, your community, and your riders. Make sure they understand as well how important bus capital dollars are so that you can get the capital you need and the rolling stock you need to provide your services. Well, I'm sorry it's been a long update, um, but we had a lot to talk about. Thanks again, as always, for uh, tuning in. And I can always be reached at 202-247-1921 or via email at bogrin at ctaa.org. Thanks and bye for now.